the game of golf is in a growing the game initiative and we are seeing impact across communities near and far in ways that golf never before had positioned itself as you all well know it's always an exciting opportunity for me when i have someone from my hometown the chicagoland area and today we are thrilled to have a noted teacher a member of the lpga and someone who's doing tremendous work not just through the first tee of chicago but as we see more and more women entering the game at professional levels she too has expanded her impact and reach and so without further hesitation we're excited to have with us today Erica Birdie Shavers, member of the member of the LPGA and noted teacher, specifically in the Chicagoland area. Erica, welcome to the Teeter Green Golf Podcast. We are excited that you're with us today. Thank you, Victor. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I appreciate you um, wanting me to be a part of your show. Well, as I said, it's always exciting to. Uh, to have someone from from my hometown, Chicagoland area, and and by way of um, one of your students, my cousin, uh, Dr. Robin Ferguson, we are we are here today. So, introduce yourself to the Tita Green Golf Podcast. So, um, well, as you mentioned, uh, you're you're a native Chicagoan, and so am I. Um, I'm, I have I'm the oldest of of three. I have two younger brothers, and um, I, I'm the director of outreach, director of community outreach for First E Greater Chicago. I started out as a, a, a assistant program director, and more recently, they've appointed me as the um, community director of outreach. And so, mainly because I've been doing a lot of work with other nonprofit groups, um, um, community organizations, just to help introduce them to the game of golf. Um, I didn't start out in, in the golf industry, though, um, as, as a child or anything. I um, My background is in mortgages and real estate. And I was in mortgages for about 20 plus years and real estate um, as well. So the combination of 25 years, I was in real estate and mortgages for a very long time. But what's so funny is I also worked in the community or in, in the community, like it was community outreach mm-hmm. with, with mortgages and real estate. And it ended up being community outreach with, with, uh, with golf, you know, working with the youth. Um, I am, uh, a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Um, I uh, have my, my own sister, ladies golf my league, sister. ladies on the green, and I've had the, mm-hmm. the league for about 12 years now. And, um, mm-hmm. I, uh, uh, as you mentioned, I'm a LPGA teacher professional. I just received my Class A certification uh, last year in October, and um, I've been eight years now with with First Tee, um, uh, working with the organization, which is now twenty. I think we're twenty three years old here in Chicago, and okay. uh, as a chapter, and um, yeah, that's that's me in a in a short, <laughs> in a short then in a short. Uh, you know, time frame. So, so first, first of all, I think we have to acknowledge the 0608 connection. So as an alpha, I certainly am excited to have my sister on this episode of the TD Green Golf Podcast with Victor Patterson. You know, you, you have such a tremendous story and we've talked before just leading up to the episode. And as you alluded to a minute ago, golf isn't... It, it it wasn't the path to who Birdie has become. And so as you've given us your background, I know that you were an athlete growing up, as so many of us were, that grew up in the Chicago area, but then you delved into your professional career. Can you talk to us about when the golf bug bit and when you decided to make it this next iteration of Erica Birdie Shavers' life journey. So let's start. Let's start from the name. <laughs> so Erica Birdie Shavers, Birdie, um, because I'm passionate about the game of golf. I, <laughs> when I was in college, I, I, I attended um, Northern Illinois University, NIU in DeKalb. And um, as a freshman there, I was always the the light, the, the lighter complexion and the shortest. <laughs> and uh, so my friends decided they would call me Tweety Bird. 
right? Okay. And so all of my friends are taller than me, you know, darker complexion. And I guess I look like a bird during that time. I don't know. I, <laughs> but um, as I um, uh, decided to become, um, you know, more than just an avid golfer, but make it my profession, I um, decided, you know, I like nicknames. Basically, I'm a big nickname person. Okay, okay. And so all of my friends, I either call them by their last names or I come up with a nickname for them. And so I said, I need a nickname in golf. I mean, you got Tiger, right. Tiger Woods. You mm -hmm. have, you know, all of these, you know, golf professionals uh, with nicknames. And so I decided to drop the Tweety and call myself Birdie. And so that's that's how the, the Birdie came about. Um, and then people, you know, they will ask me, is that my real name? Um, but I, I started golf late in life and um, mm -hmm. through some hardship back in 2007 and watching Tiger Woods on, on, on television and playing the Wii Sports video game. And so when nice. I was downsized from the, that's a true story. When I was downsized from the mortgage industry, I found myself um, um, becoming more and more engaged with the Wii Sports video game and decided that, you know, why don't you take it more seriously? So I reached mm -hmm. out to some friends. Uh, one of my best friends, her husband plays golf. Um, he's an avid golfer okay. and had been for years. And I said, you know, I'm thinking about picking up golf. What do you think I should do? And so he said, well, see if you can, you know, research, you know, women's golf clinics or something like that, if that's something you're interested in. And so I started doing a little bit of research and I found a young lady um, not too far from me uh, at the time who was hosting a women's golf clinic. And so rather than, um, you know, just continue putting around the house and playing Wii Sports videos, I, um, I found um, this group to connect with, you know, for about six weeks. But then after that, I said, I think I want private lessons, you know, because, you know, you only get so much attention in the group setting. And I knew I know the type of person I am. If I'm going to take this seriously, I'm going to need some one on one support. And so mm -hmm. I found a. Um, a teaching professional, um, and he you know, offered up, you know, uh, private lessons. And so, you know, then we were looking at my swing on a DVD. And, uh, yeah. and so now we have all of this great technology to help um, analyze her yes. swing. And um, and so, you know, Victor, I just became in love with this sport. And I mean, I found a lot of solace yeah. and enjoyment playing on the golf course. Um, it helped me through this difficult time being downsized from the, from the golf industry. I lost all of my um, you know, real estate. Um, I was a real estate, um, mm -hmm. you know, I did acquisition and rehab. So I would purchase real estate, rehab it. And, uh, I was also mm -hmm. a property manager, I had my own property management business. And so all of that went away when the recession hit and uh, I had to put all my, yeah. you know, personal property in storage. I had to move back home with my mom and I found myself just practicing a lot, playing a lot, learning more and more about the game mm -hmm. until I landed me a part time job at a golf course. You know, one of my friends, mm -hmm. um, once I decided, you know, to join a <laughs> league on Sundays and stop playing softball with my friends, she told me that uh, Billy Casper at the time that was managing our public courses was hiring. And so I mm -hmm. went and talked to the general manager and said, hey, I'm looking for a part time job. And she said, hey, well, do you golf? And I said, yes. He said, you're hired. And so nice. um, not knowing how, you know, the direction I was headed, I just needed to find some work. And I figured that since I'm passionate about golf, let me work in an industry where I'm passionate. Just like when I was in real estate, I was passionate about real estate. So let me work in the industry where I can live my passion. And um, turns out. You know, people wanted to ask me for tips. You know, they said, you have a really good swing. You know, do you mm -hmm. give lessons? And I said, well, no, don't give lessons, but I can, you know, give you some tips on how to maybe putt, chip and, 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 and you know, make a full swing. And so it just, you know, it just morphed into this other thing. You know, I found myself, you know, reinventing myself through the game. And, you know, five years later, working at the golf course, um, I, uh, um, a gentleman, um, uh, executive director with First Tee Greater Chicago was working at the golf course with the kids. And so at this point, I was like, okay, yeah, I have to make some decisions. You know, do you want to stay in the real estate industry? Do you want to, you know, see what golf is all about since you seem to be really passionate about it? And um, he approached me and said, hey, would you like to work part time, with, you know, with First Tee? And I said, sure, I would love to, because a year prior, I asked him if he was doing any hiring. And he said, no, not at the, at the present moment. And uh, they brought me on board part time to work in schools. And so I would work at uh, Billy Casper, the golf course at the time, South Shore Golf Course for a bit. And um, yep. I worked part time with First Tee. And here's the thing, Victor, I decided to really reinvent myself. I said, well, you know what, maybe I can become a 
high school golf coach. Right. And so okay. there's a high school down the street for me. And I said, uh, let me go and talk to the principal. Turns out the principal at the time was a soror. The principal and the vice principal were sororers. And so they said, yeah. here, you can come in and start a golf team here at the school. And so I started the golf team at the school. Um, and it just it just morphed into this whole thing. I, I decided I wanted to have my own ladies league. And so I started my own ladies golf some... league, ladies on the green. We're 12 years old now and have about 34, 36, seven members. And, um, yeah, and let's just, it just, let, 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 yeah, I'm let's sorry. Let's stay there. No, that's okay. But there's, because there's so much there. Um, even today, there, there's so much conversation around reinvention. I mean, we heard that through, we heard that through the COVID era. Uh, we still hear it today. Um, I think the other piece that that I found uh, appealing and attractive, and I think you can speak to some as well, is the ability of an athlete to transition to golf with discipline and commitment. Uh, we see the game growing and, and really continuing to grow where athletes of all non-golf sports are now making their way to golf. And in some respects, um, we're seeing them compete and being featured publicly in competition and so can you talk about the thought process, a few areas. One, talk about the thought process around reinventing yourself during a very challenging time, which that period was a recession. But two, you being an athlete growing up, how did that athleticism from other sports impact golf uh, impact your transition to golf and your ability to to absorb it and ultimately be where you are right now? So I ran track when I was in grade school. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason why I joined a track team was one for a social outlet. Um, you know, I was the oldest of, of two brothers and and uh, my mom moved around a little bit. So I was always starting at a new school. And so for me, you know, I developed this shyness, like, I'm like, okay, I don't want to make, continue to make new friends because we may not be at the school for very long. And so why don't I join um, a group at the school that would keep me engaged mm -hmm. with other students, right? And so I joined the track team and I was pretty good. I mean, I was bullied a little bit, so I ran home a lot. <laughs> so uh, so they, like they never Chicago. caught me. And uh, I think the the PE teacher at the time said, hey, you ought to join the, the track team. I need some more fast runners on the team. So from <laughs> there, I um, you know, I just love sports. I love, I love watching sports. I'm not an uh, avid um, prof um, college um, sports person, but I, I do watch professional sports on occasion. Um, basketball, football, tennis, um, the, the Olympics are coming up here pretty soon. I'm, I know I'm going to mm -hmm. probably watch some mm -hmm. of those. Um, matches. And, and so from there, you know, as I got older, you know, I wanted to have a curricular activity, some sort of curricular activity with my friends. Mm -hmm. And so softball mm -hmm. became um, a way for me to do that, a way for me to stay engaged mm -hmm. socially with my friends and to stay, you know, physically active. I think, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of times we think as we get older, we, the body's supposed to shut down and, and, because we stop working and we stop doing any of these other activities, but I want to have a long, long life. And I think the more physically active I am mm -hmm. engaging in something that I enjoy will just keep me, you know, healthy. And, um, and, and not to mention having fun and, and being around, you know, family and friends. Um, so I mm -hmm. transitioned from playing softball because golf, I discovered golf yep. and yep. I had to part ways from playing softball, which was, I wasn't really good at it. I just enjoyed, you know, I was fast. So if I can get the, hit the ball, I could get to the base. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Keep going. so, um, and then, you know, and stay engaged and, and active with my friends. And so once I discovered golf, the only day I could play was on Sundays because I was, um, you know, still selling real estate on the side and the, um, the, the, and once I, you know, started taking lessons and and discovered that I really like golf and I wanted to play in a league, and so the league was on Sundays, 
And so I stopped playing softball. I started playing golf on, on Sundays with this league. And, and so, so, and as an athlete, to your question, as an athlete, I, you know, I just understood balance. I understood coordination. I understood, Mm -hmm. um, strength and, you know, I still Mm -hmm. exercise regularly. And, and so once I had a, you know, really good instructor to, you know, help me with form and understanding the mechanics of a golf club and, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the different iterations of the swing, um, I just, it just, I was able to connect with it pretty quickly. So for me, you know, practicing, a lot because I had, you know, all this free time, Um, you know, I had exhausted all my savings and, um, you know, playing the game and trying to figure out what what was next. And, you know, my parent, my mom, she didn't understand why golf was becoming such uh, an important part of my life, you know, um, because she didn't grow up, you know, with golf. I mean, nobody in my family plays. And um, so, but I got, I got really good in a short period of time just because of how I was applying myself to the sport. And, and I think that's the piece that uh, want to make sure that we talk about in this particular episode, no matter what sport you play, if you've played it for long enough, you've had to learn the mechanics of that sport. Mm-hmm. You've had to learn the fundamental basics of executing and getting to an outcome. And so with that foundation Golf is very similar. And I share that because some of you all may be listening today who are curious and may be in the middle of thinking about playing and actually playing. And so that athletic background, um, just like Birdie has shared with us, and, and I'm another example of that, and so many other listeners are as well, um, take that first step because you have a really solid foundation that will ultimately manifest itself as you get through the private lesson piece. Uh, Bertie, thank you for sharing that. You know, you and I have talked about growing the game initiative and Mike Juan really kind of publicly shared his position on that and, and how the USGA was, was stepping into that. Uh, subsequently, the PGA is doing something, the LPGA is doing something as well. Um, can you share with us how active you are in the Chicago area in growing the game yourself? And as I talked about, and as you've mentioned, you're not only doing that through the first tee, you're actually doing it in practice and private lessons as well. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the the fortunate thing about my situation being engulfed in golf as much as I am through my women's league, through first tee, through um, just being an avid player of the sport. um, It gives me the opportunity to tap into the different resources we have in Chicago to find young people. And so we find young people in schools, we find young people in uh, churches, we find young people that play other sports. Mm. And so first T, first and foremost, you know, that's where I really got started, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. I, you know, I understand what our mission is, and that's to engage as many Mm. kids as we can um, through through the sport, um, through education, so that we can have um, a, like, for example, like being with First Tee for the past eight years, I've watched our chapter grow. I've watched us not only grow in terms of our locations, um, we have two hubs right now. We're working on the third hub in terms of different parts of the city. You know, uh, our footprint is, 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 is wide in terms of um, how many kids we reach in different parts of the city, um, the underrepresented mm-hmm. uh, specifically, especially within the schools. And for me, that's that's near and dear to my heart. When I was in mortgages, for example, mm-hmm. if I can just step back for a minute, and I wanted to work with families that lived in underrepresented communities because, as you know, right. you know, you know, we go back in history about redlining and trying to keep, you know, right. um, African Americans and and uh, from purchasing homes and, and and building on land and that kind of thing. 
So for me, I wanted to stay within my community to make sure that I could help families purchase a home. And so I would do these home buyer workshops. I would help with, you know, credit repair and I would help to find, you know, um, funding, you know, or, or financing for these families so that they can afford to purchase a home. And so golf is the same. Golf to me is the same, like finding kids who are unfamiliar with the sport. You know, they, they, they have, you know, they don't even know that there's a golf course in their backyard and there's several, right. several schools around the, the places where we teach. Yep. And so this past year, for example, we've done a tremendous job in, and re, uh, re, um, inserting ourselves in the school because of COVID, you know, we, we, we lost a couple of years not having to uh, build those partnerships. And so now we've been back in the schools. We just had a special on CBS here in Chicago at one of our schools, Poe Elementary, and, um, and they're a big uh, partner of ours. And, um, and we, we see but anywhere from 300 to 600 kids in the school, you know? Um, and so to me, the more we do that type of work, the more we work with um, the caddy programs that we have in the city of Chicago. I'm also mm -hmm. the, on the board of the Jackson Park Golf Association. So they have a caddy program. Um, we are partnered with the Western Golf Association. So they also have a caddy program. You know, they're, they, you know, um, have an yeah. amazing Evan Scholar that they um, give out to a lot of students who, uh, who are caddy through their, their, through their program. And so, you know, I think we're doing a tremendous job in in reaching more and more kids um, of color and uh, more girls too, as a matter of fact, yep. Um, yep. to play the game. And so it warms my heart, even as a teaching professional, when I have men and women come to me who've never played sports. And so, and they're thinking to themselves, well, I can't pick up this game. I've never played sport before. And that's, that's not so, <laughs> right. I mean, anyone can pick it up, but there's the commitment. You know, that's that's where the biggest is. challenge is, is how can you carve out some time once or twice a week to practice something when you don't have mm -hmm. a sports background? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, good, I really. try to be optimistic. Um, it takes longer. You have to have a lot of patience. Um, but, you know, anybody can 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 play this game if they if they dedicate themselves to it. When you think about. um your own journey and you use the word engulf use the phrase engulfed in, in golf um what have you found that has made the sport so magnetic for you and uh, and those around you you know why is golf so powerful in in a way that once you get a club in your hand and hit that ball, whether you hit it perfectly or whether you shank it, um, you want to come back. What makes it so magnetic? So when students, when, when adults, let me start there. When adult comes to me and say, you know, Eric, I've been, I've always wanted to learn how to play golf. Um, and, you know, I got married, I had kids and, you know, and now my husband plays. And so now that, you know, um, I have more free time, I want to, I want to, come back to it. And I said, well, what was it about golf that you, that you enjoyed? Like for the short period of time mm -hmm. you were, um, you know, that you played or were around it. Well, you know, I just like being a part of nature or I just like mm -hmm. the, the camaraderie that I have when I'm, you know, with my, you know, my female friends or, um, I just want to have an activity to do, you know, when I get, when I retire or, um, you know, I just want to, you know, have a, a social outlet. You know, I enjoy walking mm -hmm. and I want to, you know, I enjoy making new friends or, um, you know, a lot of my fa my fa family and friends play. And so or I just recently got married. My husband plays. And so I want to learn so he and I can have this activity to do, you know, when we retire. Um, I mean, there's so many different reasons. There's a, a, a plethora of reasons why people pick up the sport. Now, for those that pick it up and really, really like it. You know, they send me videos. I said, look, 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 Coach Eric, um, you know, look, Birdie, you know, I, I bought me a putting ring and it's right here in my living room and I, I make three putts before I leave and go to work. Or they'll send me a video of themselves at the driving range. I mean, that's real commitment right there for those that, right. that really right. want to learn is. and get better and play. And they're not trying to, you know, try out for some tournament or anything like that. They just want to get good. Right. They want to be able to, you know, if they go to an outing or, or play in a scramble, they want to be able to contribute, Right. And, um, and so that, that, that's exciting. 
it's exciting to hear them right. say that they are interested. I have a, I um, I do a clinic for Queens on the Green. I'm going to be heading there uh, this afternoon, and I've been talking okay. to this one lady for two years to get new clubs because somebody handed her down these stiff shafts, outdated clubs, and she's trying to hit. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you need, you need different equipment. Right. And so right. last week right. she comes to, uh, to class. And I look over and I was like, oh, my gosh, you bought new clubs. She says, yes, I finally went and bought me a new set of clubs. We took pictures. Everyone, you know, you know, we 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 we, we were excited and, and, and congratulated her. And so and so. So now she's committed right now. She's committed to make the investment because that's just it. It's an yep. investment. And I think a lot of times people are afraid to that's make the exactly investment. Right. You know, it's that's exactly three or four or five hundred bucks for a set of clubs. And you're afraid you're not going to, you know play them, but you can spend three or four, I'm not, I'm not judging three or four or $500 on a plane ticket someplace. Right. Let's think about right. it. I mean, the, it's not the money is whether or not you want to make the investment. And, and really that's it. And it's funny that you said that you get a uh, phone call or pictures or videos. Uh, and again, kind of inserting my, my, my lovely cousin in this, but I'm sure she's reached out to you. And, and I know I've gotten a phone call or two, uh, myself that she has seen progress. And so it is that, and I know Robin's deep passion and commitment um, to getting better. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it makes complete sense. It lines up very, very well. Um, Ladies on the green, one of the many golf clubs across America, you know, talk to us about this group and your role in the group as well. So ladies on the green really started because I wanted to have women to play with. I wanted to be committed to playing mm -hmm. at least once a week. And aside from when I was playing on Sundays, you know, once I um, started really getting engaged with teaching, I picked up a, a job at one of our clubs here in Chicago on Sundays, a private club in here in, in Chicago on Sundays. And so I had to stop playing in the league. And so now, okay. You know, having had that difficult time in my life where I, you know, I lost everything and 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 pretty much ended up broke. Um, I needed to focus on, you know, um, becoming more stable financially, right? And so I stopped playing mm -hmm. golf on Sundays with my friends, picked up a teaching um, opportunity at the club, and I um, needed to have an outlet to to play more or at least yep. once a week, if not yep. twice a week. And so during this time, even prior to picking up the 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 the, the um the job on Sundays, I said, well, why don't I start a ladies golf league? This is right around the time I became a high school coach. Why don't I start a ladies golf league? And I started thinking, well, what do I want to call it? What kind of name can I have? And so ladies on the green was just eight women, eight women, you know, two, two or three of them from another golf league that wanted to support me. And so it was about eight to 10 of us. I started, you know, sharing it with some friends. I had my first membership meeting 12 years ago in this cafe um, called um, Chef Sarah's and, and it just, it just more from there, you know, people just wanted to be a part of a league where they felt um, they belong. They felt that, you know, just because I'm a beginner doesn't mean that I can't be a, a part of a, a, a supportive group. And so I think that's what my members do. I think they support other women coming into the sport that want to learn. And because when we have the meeting, I asked, you know, I said, well, who, who invited you? Well, my friend invited me. She said she really enjoys the league. You know, um, she mm. doesn't feel on, um, uncomfortable when she knows she's just a beginner, the, the women there, they're so nice and they're kind. And, and so now this year I've started to incorporate a clinic within our schedule, mm -hmm. um, just so that I can mm -hmm. teach the women. Right. And I said, well, why not, you know, incorporate one, you know, an hour before we tee off where they can come to the punting green or the driving range and we can work on those uh, fundamentals so that when they do go on the course once a week with the league, they feel more confident that they can, you know, perform play, and play. And keep moving. Yeah, yeah. Is Erica, is that Chicago only? Say that again. Is Ladies on the Green Chicago only? Yes. Yes. I have no so desire, okay. Victor, to expand and grow. <laughs> There's a lot of amazing um uh, women that are starting their own uh groups and they're they have two or three or Correct. four different markets. I, I, I'm way too busy um, to even initiate something like that. Now, maybe when I pass on the league to, to someone who wants to continue running it and they want to expand to other markets, I support them. But 
yeah, I, I, I would be. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, that that makes completely sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things that I think is I think is exciting and probably long overdue, and and there's probably a ton of people that would admit this is really the evolution of women's sports. And we have seen this um, active spike in popularity over the last two calendar years. Uh, We know the Chevron earlier this year increased the purse Mm -hmm. and extended their partnership with the LPGA there in Houston. Uh, The KPMG is hosting the uh, women's PGA championship literally as we speak out in Washington state and continues to do an amazing job there. Um, Where do you see women's golf headed in the next two to five years, given these two, and we can call them anchors, you know, anchor organizations with enormous global brands. Well, I know that we um, we've partnered with KPMG here in Chicago um, okay. you know, on, a, on a different level. I mean, they've supported us with our outreach. For example, we were at the BMW Championship, um, and we had a tent, uh, meaning first tee, Greater Chicago. We had a tent there, um, a game changer tent, and that was our first time ever um, having something there like that. And we invited our nice. uh, girls outreach group. We invited our um, Caps groups. We invited all of our nonprofit groups, outreach, outreach, outreach groups that we work with. Excuse me, and um, and so KPMG was a big sponsor of that, right? And so they are helping to put the dollars in place, right, to help make it more accessible yeah. for people that want to, or kids that want to learn the game, people that uh, kids that want to be a part of the game. Um, I think it's great what's happening in the industry, Um, you know, whether it's, you know, having players from APGA, for example, play on the PGA uh, circuit, whether it's, um, um, I know you probably know Jamie Taylor. She has uh, the uh, Black Ops directory. Um, Mm -hmm. She's doing tremendous work um, with young people Mm -hmm. and getting more uh, boys and girls engaged in the game. Uh, Stephen Curry who's doing a mm-hmm. tremendous uh, job in uh, working with um, Howard University and, and other mm-hmm. um, organizations to get kids to play the game at, at an elite level, right? And so I Correct. think when you Correct. have um, people that are doing the grass wor- the grassroot work and organizations like KPMG, LPGA, and other or- uh, places that have the dollars to support it, um, I, I see it, it continuing. It's growing at a, at a snail's pace, but I mean, we we can at least look to see that there's some progress being made, right? I mean, I can't sit here and say we aren't making some progress. Right, right. <clears throat> and again, I think that when you have two big anchor organizations that that firmly are placing their footprint in the commitment and support of women's golf. I think it's almost like the Pied Piper effect, right? You need a leader and then others will follow. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we see something similar to that over the next two to five years. Um, Bertie, as we get, you know, closer and closer to the end of this episode, um, we support communities of color and women in the investment of golf amongst many other things on the T to Green Golf podcast with Victor Patterson, where can, where can, let's say the greater Chicago land area. And for that matter, it may be parts of Milwaukee and maybe Indianapolis and, and Gary and, and some people that may be in Southwest Michigan. How can they get in touch with you if they are looking for someone, um, similar to themselves in terms of background, but now your excellence as a teacher uh, provides them with that level of comfort to say, this is the person that I want to introduce me to the game. So I've, I've been recently been doing a lot of uh, women's clinics, you know, and these are um, CEOs or, you know, employees of, of organizations that want to introduce their clients to the game. And I am so grateful. I, I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to the sport. I'm grateful to my 
uh, ability to play and and play well when I can play. Lately, I haven't been able to play all the time. <laughs> so my game You're is busy. suffering a little bit. <laughs> even though I just purchased some new clubs, I, I haven't even had time to really groom them. But right. Um, right. I, uh, so that I don't lose thought about the question you just asked me, I, um, yeah, repeat that question again. <laughs> Just how can they get in touch oh, with yes, you? Yes, Social yes, media, yes. website? Yes. So um, swingeasygolflessons at gmail.com. Swingeasygolflessons at gmail.com. Um, just like it sounds. Um, and uh, my phone number is 773-502-0259. 773-502-0259. Um, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. Um, lately I've been, um, receiving emails from women that want to host these clinics, um, Mm. want me to host these clinics. And it's been, uh, from all walks of life. I mean, it's been incredible to, to see this trajectory of my life. Um, and sometimes I have to like, you know, blink my eyes and poke myself and say, is this real? Because it just kind of happened, Victor. I mean, I I didn't see it coming, you know, um, it just kind of, it just kind of made itself available to me, right? Like here's an opportunity for you to get through a difficult time. And and I tell my students all the time, golf is like meditation. You know, it's meditation to me because you get to quiet the mind, you get to center yourself to focus right here in the moment on this one thing. And that's the only real way, real way that you can really get good at anything is to just devote most of your attention to it, right? You know, that quote about, you know, the, the thing you give your attention to grows. And so, and it does. Yep. It just, it's just a true. fact. And, and then when I was applying myself to the sport, just to learn it, to find solace and enjoyment on the course, you know, walking it or riding it and hanging out with other people or just by myself, which is really what I enjoy most about it. It's a sport you can in, engage by yourself, um, you know, and just get away from the, the, the social media and the incessant texting and, and all of those types types of things and yeah. really quiet the mind. Um, it's fulfilling. You know, you learn a lot about yourself when you when you get yeah. present like that. Now, do you have Instagram? I How, do. do. I do. Um, yeah. Swing Easy Golf 08 on Instagram at Swing. Yeah. Um, so, folks, we've and got Facebook. It's uh, Erica Birdie Shavers. You can just find me at Erica Birdie Shavers. Okay. And I'm on LinkedIn folks, as we... well. So, there are a number of ways to connect with Erica Birdie Shavers um, based in the Chicagoland area. C- continues to carve out a very large footprint in supporting golf's growing the game initiative. Um, teacher, leader in in the golf space as well. A uh, number of ways to connect with her, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and email. Uh, we'll make sure that you get all of those as well. Uh, it has been an episode where we've learned that though you did not grow up playing the game of golf, it is never too late to make that transition and reinvent what we have learned from season two, and we continue to learn from season two of the TD Green Golf Podcast with Victor Patterson, is that an investment in the game can go well beyond simply playing the game. There are things on the front end, there are opportunities on the back end, there's volunteer opportunities, there are opportunities for yourself to reinvent and get deeper and deeper and deeper into this game that so many of us have fallen in love with and so we're thankful that erica took some time out today as she mentioned earlier she's off to uh another clinic and and teaching opportunity for for herself so we're thankful for the time that she's given us Uh, we're excited about going forward with the td green golf podcast and spending time with her and as we always say hit it straight from td green Thank you. We are out.